I'm originally born and raised in uh, Beirut, Lebanon. I moved to America seven years ago to pursue stand-up comedy because I was looking for danger. <laughs> and danger I got. I perform all around the country. I travel all around the country and uh, it gets scary sometimes because I'm an Arab woman, okay? And as an Arab woman, I get to some places where I get on stage and I say things that trigger some people you know, some things like, uh, I'm Arab or I'm a woman. And they're like, no! <laughs> I'm like, hey, I don't like this either, buddy. You think I wanted this? You think I'm having fun? I went through war. <laughs> I did. I went through war. Which no one ever believes me when I say that. No one ever believes me when I say I went through war. Because I don't have war vibes. <laughs> You guys are laughing, you agree. <laughs> Wars, they come with a vibe and I don't got it. I was a war refugee. I don't look like a war refugee. I look like someone would tell me they were a war refugee and I'd be like, oh my God, my family moved us around a lot as a kid, so I get it. <laughs> I mean, you were the same, yeah. Which by the way, real quick about the war, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Like, I'm fine. I feel like people get concerned when I say it, and I should let you know, like, I'm okay. It happened so long ago, I don't even remember it. Like, sometimes I sit at home and I try to remember war. <laughs> See, nothing. I'm fine. I don't even have trauma. I don't. I mean, when I hear fireworks, I cry. But it's like my mother always says, who doesn't? <laughs> I go through other stuff. Like, I went through other stuff. I have variety in my trauma. I do. The war happened when I was 12. I was 12 years old. We fled it. We took a bus from Lebanon to Syria under active airstrikes. We had to cross the Syrian border with the Syrian army. I cried the whole way through it. And then years later, when I was 19, um, that was way, like, the war was way over, my older brother caught me sitting on a guy's lap, and uh, he told my mom, and she grounded me for two weeks. I cried the whole way through that too. <laughs> and if you gave me the choice today to go back in time and relive only one of these two traumatic experiences, I would choose the Syrian army 11 times over. <laughs> Cause war sucks, okay? It does, but so does getting shamed. <laughs> and also war, it makes you tough. It makes you intriguing, interesting. Getting shamed, it makes you, uh, how do you say, bad at sex. <laughs> it makes you bad at sex. I am bad at sex. I am bad at it. And I'm not trying to be cute. I'm bad. I'm not fun. I'm not present. I'm everywhere else. I am freaking out the whole time. I'm like, can your neighbors see us? Turn the curtains off. Turn the lights off. Don't look at me. Don't touch me. The whole time. No one's having fun. Turn off the curtains. Thank you for pretending you didn't hear me butcher the English language. <laughs> oh my God. My friends here, they try to give me advice all the time. They're like, Natalie, you just gotta get out of your head. Uh, just get out of your head. I'm like, I'm not in my head, my family is. <laughs> They're always there, every time. But I'm growing. I'm getting a lot, like I'm getting a lot better. Five years ago, I would have never never publicly admitted that I, was, that I wasn't a virgin. But now, I don't care. Now I say it. I say it, I say it. I have premarital sex, allegedly. <laughs> I used to not masturbate out of shame. Now I don't do it out of laziness, and that is growth. <laughs> So much work. <laughs> Masturbating is so much work. No one ever tells you that. It's so much work. You gotta really commit. You gotta give time to find out what we're I'm talking for women, by the way. I don't know if that was clear. <laughs> Just real quick side note, okay? For men, it looks real easy and fun. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> but for women, it's work. You gotta really, like, you really, some women don't even do it because of how much work it is. Like you ask women, it's a common thing to ask women, do you masturbate? Because some women don't, you never ask a man that. 
I never ask a man that. And then you look at him, you're like, do you ever stop? <laughs> Did you take a break? What's going on down there? <laughs> I'm almost 30. Um, and this year I got my first ever boyfriend in my adult life. My first boyfriend in my adult life. And I have to be very careful how I say that because I once said my first ever adult boyfriend and that is not. <laughs> That's not how you say that. <laughs> my first boyfriend and uh, when you're like almost 30, I feel like when you're around that age, you get to a point with your partner where you look at them and you're like, mm, is he the one or am I just tired? <laughs> I don't know. You gotta pay attention to this stuff. <laughs> I think he's the one. When I met him, I hadn't had sex in four years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four years and, I, and uh, then I had sex with him. Not only do I have premarital sex with him, I have it unprotected. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I have unprotected sex, but it's okay, because I'm on prayer. <laughs> no, I don't pray. I don't believe in God. <laughs> I pull out, because I believe in science. <laughs> I don't believe in pre-cum. <laughs> I don't believe in pre-cum. <laughs> I think it's fake. <laughs> it's a rumor. You heard it here first. Somebody made it up. <laughs> I think whoever made up pre-cum is the same person who made up that when you go outside with your hair wet, you get sick. <laughs> Please. Please. It's some overbearing mother somewhere. Listen, I don't want this. I wanted to take the pill, but I couldn't. I tried to five years ago. My body couldn't handle it. It almost exploded. <laughs> it really did. And then I didn't have sex for four years, so I didn't care. And then I met my boyfriend. We got sexually active. And as soon as I got sexually active with him, as soon as I started having sex again, Roe versus Wade got overturned. Immediately, as I started having sex. I was like, whoa, okay, maybe there is a God and he is not fun. <laughs> immediately, immediately. I was actually in Lebanon when Roe versus Wade was overturned. I was in the streets of Beirut with my friends and we all read the news at the same time and everybody, I'm telling you, everybody was shocked, shocked. And you know, things are bad when Arabs are like, wow, what they're doing over there is oppressive. <laughs> huh. They don't have water, they don't have electricity back home right now, and my friends are looking at me like, are you gonna be okay? <laughs> it was embarrassing. I was like, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. What if that shit hits New York? That's where I live. I'm like, you never know. You never know. So I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna get an IUD. I'm home, I'm gonna go to my doctor who's known me since I was born, and I'm gonna get an IUD. And how fun are IUDs? <laughs> As a principal. As a principal, they're fun. They just hang out in there and they just shoo sperm away. <laughs> right? Like the sperm comes in and the IUD's like <laughs> That's my little Lebanese IUD. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so excited. So I went to my doctor and uh, I stayed on his table for two hours and when I tell you this guy tried everything, he turned me, he flipped me, he shot me up in the sky, nothing worked, he could not get it in. He could not get my IUD in. And then he looked in my uterus, he looked, he did an ultrasound and he was like, ah, I was like, ah, you are one in 100 women, Natalie, with a crescent-shaped uterus. Yeah, you guys are like, what? Because you're part of the other 99. <laughs> All right, like I'll explain it to you. Your uteruses, they're like this. Mine is like this. I was so sad and he felt so bad. He was like, don't worry. That's what he said, don't worry. Once you'll get your first kid, it'll flatten out and then we can put it in. I was like, who gave you a degree? <laughs> I gotta get a kid to stop myself from getting a kid? <laughs> what do I do, kill him after? <laughs> All right, my name is Natalie. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your show.